Let me have a quick conversation with you about how to get huge credit limit increases no matter the card or your credit score. This works all the time. Don't go anywhere. You're going to love today's conversation. I guarantee it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Security Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you had to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or a vodka and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to explain to you how to get huge credit limit increases, no matter the credit card or your credit score. And this works all the time. The first thing you need to pay attention to is what we call proportion. Okay? Credit card, credit card, credit card. So right now you probably have a credit card, you have ten thousand dollars or you have fifteen thousand dollars and you want you want a limit increase. How do you go about that? You want to ask for less than forty percent of your current limit. This is what we call proportion. It's really important. Let me give you an example. If you have a credit card right now and you have ten thousand dollars on your credit uh, on, on that card, right, as a limit, you want to ask for it. Four thousand increase four thousand increase or less. Do not ask for more. Okay, because if, when you ask for it, we have found through extensive research that 40% is a sweet spot. Okay, it's the sweetest spot, really. You have a high probability of approval because you're not really increasing the, the credit card issuer's exposure vis a vis you that much. Okay, and you may have a soft pull also. So, no hard pull if the issuer's exposure is not increasing much. Think about that. Think about that. So, when you're asking for an increase, you want to do two things. You want to you want to have a win-win situation. You want to get the, the increase you're asking for, and on top of that, you want to have a, a soft pull, not a hard pull here, okay? So, the bottom line is that there's no risk for the issuer saying that you have too much credit that you're not using also because you're not asking for that much credit. Okay, and please make the request online. Many credit card issuers allow their cardholders to ask for a credit limit increase online. So if you are asking for this, but before you do that though, make sure that you have a strong relationship with a credit card issuer. In other words, you have accounts with them, or either, or you have a, a great credit score. This is important, okay? And so you you can so before you actually ask for a credit limit increase, you want to update uh, important information. For example, if you have if you now have higher income or you have had a bonus or whatever, if your financial situation has improved, you want to mention that, okay? So the bottom line I want you to remember here is do not go overboard. Do not go overboard. Be proportion. Be be proportional, okay? You might be tempted to ask for more. You might be tempted to ask for five grand. 10 grand if you already have a 10 grand in other words double your credit card limit increase your, your to double your credit card limit but don't do that okay stick to the 40 percent rule that i have given you and you will you will just be amazed at the uh, probability of approval okay 40 percent number two you want to think about the timing folks i'm giving you very specific hacks here so when you are when you want to if you want to get a huge credit limit increase no matter the credit card or your credit score, timing is important. So you want to apply when your FICO score goes up. Let's say you have uh, something has happened and you just uh, have removed something from, uh, you have removed the uh, derogatory item from your credit report and now your FICO score, your FICO score jumped by, let's say, 50, 50 points or it's 100 points. This is a great time to apply. Okay, if your DTI goes down, let's say you have basically have managed to bring your debt to income ratio down this is a great opportunity also i'll talk about dti level one if your cur goes down so your cur your credit utilization ratio goes down i'll speak about the cur also later on but though this is what i talk about timing because you know what it's important to apply at the right moment money 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 let's say you paid off a big loan if you paid off if you paid off a big loan and we all know that uh, your payment history accounts for 35 percent of your credit score right this is kind of this is kind of important. So if you just make if you just made a, a big loan payment, chances are you have actually now you have a lower debt to income ratio. And in some cases, even though a loan is not a line of credit, you still have a, a low credit utilization ratio. OK, so this is kind of cool. Or let's say you have received a large windfall at work or from you from uh, your uncle, from your late uncle, uh, Cash Mula, whatever. 
the bottom line here is that timing is important. You don't apply, you don't apply to, you don't apply for a credit limit increase when you know things are not really working for you. Okay. So the, the bottom, the, it's also important to understand that when you apply for a credit limit increase, there is a chance that they might do a hard pull on you. So be prepared. Okay. Put it in your mind. I want you to put in your mind right now that your score might go down by a few points if you apply. So be really clear about saying, listen, this is what I, this is the card that I want. This is the, this is the limit I need. And please have a number. Okay. Don't tell me you just want a limit increase. No. Talk to me about, Hey, listen, I want $4,000 credit limit increase. I want $10,000 credit limit increase. Put a number on, on, on the thing. Okay. You want to quantify things. If you don't quantify things, you're just dreaming. You're just letting the, the credit card issuer giving you a number. Nobody wants that. Pick a number. They might not agree with the number but they will bring it down and make sure the number is high enough. Okay. This is like when you're negotiating a salary. Okay. What you don't want to go, you don't want to go too low or you want to start you don't want to start too low. Right. So you want to maybe say, you know, I want an increase of $10,000 knowing deep inside that you probably will be, be, will be happy with five, five grand. So the credit card issuer will probably say, you know what, we, we can't give you $10,000 now, but we'll give you $6,000. Either way you win. The third thing is be patient. It's important. So when we talk about when we talk about getting a huge credit limit increase, you've got to incorporate the element of patience. Okay. One thing you need, one thing I want you to really understand is that you want to apply six months after your last request. So if the credit card issue were just, uh, let's say if they were bumped you up maybe uh, six months ago or four months ago or three months ago, you really have to wait six months. It's important. The reason is that when they bumped you, they want to see how you use the card, how your payment history is. Okay. You got to give them some, uh, some, uh, time, some room to analyze your, your transactional volume. This is important. And one thing you need to understand is that, so you apply six months after your last request and apply six to 12 months after getting the card initially. So if this is your first card with them and the credit card issuer hasn't really bumped you because they actually, actually, uh, they bumped to you automatically but if they don't you want to wait for six to twelve months and again this is important because you're trying to tell them hey listen i'm a good card holder i manage my my finances responsibly okay i know what i'm doing and my cur is low my dti is low i know what i'm doing so that they will actually uh, they will basically approve you for a credit limit increase no matter how huge you want it. And it's important to wait for automatic increases. Okay. Because some companies give cardholders an automatic credit limit increase when they have had the card for a while and have been using it responsibly. Okay. So those are the two keywords for a while. I mean, it's not a word, but you know, you know what I mean? So you have a history of using the card and then you have responsibility in terms of using the card. Okay. So you can also wait for a pre qualification offer on another card from the same issuer or, di or a different issuer. This is possible also. This is why patience is important, not rushing, taking time to analyze things, taking time to understand how my credit card usage is affecting my credit score or not. Those are, those are important things. Okay. And so big decision time, big decision time. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you have had this, uh, this uh, credit card or when was the first time you had it? And when was the last time you had an, a credit limit increase on the same card you want to uh, have another credit limit increase on? When was the last time? Has it been six months already or less than that? So this is important. Okay. You can also apply when you see the credit limit increase offer in your online dashboard. Some, some credit card uh, issuers will actually show you how, by how much you can actually bump up your credit limits. So if you see that, if you love the number, Hey, guess what? Go ahead and click on it. The fourth thing I want you to, this is a very important hack and a lot of people don't know this, but this is important. You want to apply at a branch if possible. I know I said earlier that you want to apply online, but this is because some credit card issuers don't have a, a large network of branches, but Hey, if you have a card with a, a chase, a Citibank, a Wells Fargo, like those big national banks, you want to really, you want to bring your ass to a branch. You want to sit down with a, with a rep. You want to have a conversation. Now, a phone application is also okay. 
you can call your card issuer you want to call the number on the back of your card and ask a customer service representative whether you are a um, you want to ask the customer service rep whether you are eligible for a higher credit limits and the rep may ask you uh, why you're, you're requesting this as well as the weather as well as uh, whether your income has gone up recently so it's all about it it's really important to sort of to explain to explain why you need a credit limit increase and why you deserve it okay and but this kind of conversation is uh, it's just a lot better to have it at a branch don't let nobody tell you the other nobody tell you the opposite okay people might people might be telling you oh well you know it's just a lot it's more convenient convenient who needs convenience you want to be uh, approved that's all it's more convenient to sit on your chair to be on the comfort of your house and just call and ask for a credit limit increase they're lying to you okay and or telling you that you can apply online they're lying to you if you have a big national bank as your credit card issuer you want to walk into a branch and have a conversation and that way you can gauge your approval odds also see it's also important to understand that when you speak to someone that person is going to talk to the underwriting uh, team okay because every every credit card issuer has an underwriting team that looks at certain uh, limit increases uh, individually now they do have a system for automating everything but if you're asking for a large if you want a large limit increase you better talk to someone okay so bottom line is you want to apply at a branch if possible you want to tell the rep about your financial situation and i will speak about the, the financial situation later on but it's important to explain to the rep again why you need that limit increase and why you deserve that limit increase if you're able to do a good job at that this is really good you'll get the money 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 that you're asking for okay you can talk a bit about what's going on in your life i'm talking about your job your family life are you trying to purchase a house have you have you gotten a new job prom or a promotion in your current job you just want to you know i'm not asking you to tell to just reveal everything about your life to the lender to the credit card issuer but you need to give them or her enough information to qualify you for a credit limit increase let me talk to you about utilization so when I talk about utilization this is an important hack if you want to get a huge credit limit increase automatically of course we are talking about credit utilization ratio okay and this is important because this is the amount of revolving credit you are currently using divided by the total amount of revolving credit you have available so in other words it's basically when you talk about credit utilization we're talking about how much you currently owe divided by your credit limit okay so it's generally expressed as a percentage so let me give you an example let me break it down for you okay let's say you have a total of ten thousand dollars in a credit available on two credit cards and you have a balance of $5,000 on one, your credit utilization ratio is 50%. 5,000 divided by 10,000, okay? So you're, you are using half of the total credit you have available. So you can calculate an overall credit utilization ratio as well as the, the ratio for each of your credit cards. Remember, when we talk about credit utilization ratio, we are speaking about what? Revolving lines of credit, not term loans, just credit cards. And, uh, lines of credit okay and so you also have so you have a per card ratio or you have an overall ratio okay and you need to understand that uh, credit utilization is a really important because uh, FICO scoring models actually use the credit utilization ratio and this can have an impact on your credit score and it's up to 30 percent of the credit score this is really important and this makes this ratio among the more inferential influential factors after your payment history okay so you need to have a, a clear conversation about that and not a conversation but you need to have a clear understanding about that I'm talking about revolving credit I'm talking about calculating your per card utilization versus total utilization okay and please please keep in mind that you want to have a rate that is below 30% if you really want to get a, a, a huge credit limit increase right off the bat you want to maintain your ratio below 30 percent okay and this is important and you the, the the question is should you open credit cards to improve your credit utilization ratio you can you can also request a credit limit increase 
from a credit card issuer that will help you also this is what we're talking about today right and you remember that if you want to manage your credit utilization ratio that ratio you can manage it several ways i just said that you can request a credit limit increase you can pay credit card balances in full every month you can keep open credit accounts to have they have zero balances even if you don't intend to use them as long as they don't they don't charge you let's say uh, an annual uh, you know a fee annually or you can also open new credit accounts i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation about uh, how to get a huge credit limit increase right off the bat. And uh, I want to talk to you now about debt to income, your DTI, because uh, your DTI is, is an important metric that you need to pay attention to, okay? And there are several factors that make up a DTI ratio. So, you are, so when we talk about DTI, we obviously talk about credit card issuers, but we also talk about other lenders including mortgage lenders okay and uh, th and this is kind of important this is important for you because if one day you want to buy a house or you want to refinance your house you want to pay attention to your front end ratio also called the housing ratio and the back end ratio which just shows what portion of your income is needed to cover all of your monthly debt obligations plus your mortgage payments and housing expenses but here we are talking about credit card credit card credit card this is what we're talking about. So you basically want to, when you think about the DTI, you're thinking about how much of your money, the percentage of your monthly gross income goes towards your housing expenses, okay, your groceries, all that kind of stuff. And it's important to understand that you just want to add up all of your monthly debts. So this may include your monthly mortgage, minimum credit card payments, auto student or personal loan payments, your monthly alimony or child support payments if you are in that in that uh, situation and any other debts payment that show on your credit report so you take you add up all those monthly debts and you want to divide that sum by your monthly gross income remember this is your this is actually your take home pay before taxes and other monthly deductions okay it's a pre-tax income so you want to convert the figure into a percentage and that is your DTI ratio so similar to your credit utilization ratio you want to keep your DTI your DTI as low as possible okay your debt to income ratio must be as low as possible probably around 30 or 35 percent that shows financial responsibility okay this is what we call at least uh, having an ideal debt to income ratio even though uh, conventional uh, lenders such as uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have said that they will expect they will actually accept a DTI ratio as high as 50 percent we believe on this show that it is just a lot better if you want to have ideal ratio to be around 28 to 30 percent and if you're really 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 uh, if you go high you should stop at 35 36 percent okay and remember that your debt to income ratio can impact your credit score okay this is important remember that credit utilization uh, ratio actually has a 30% um, impact on your credit score and CUR is linked to DTI. So if you want to lower your debt to income ratio, you want to track your spending by creating a budget and reduce unnecessary purchases to put more money toward paying down your debt, map out a plan to pay down your debt, make your debt more affordable and avoid taking on more debts. Now, the last step in this show is the last step in this uh, strategy is you want to have a plan B because nobody is perfect. You might apply and things might not work. OK, whatever. Did these things happen? Right. But you need to actually first understand that you have options for getting a higher credit limit. You can also apply for a new card. So if you have been good at making on time payments with the lines of credit and credit cards you already have and your credit is in good shape, you could be approved for a new card with a higher limit. Even if the limit on the new card isn't higher than the current one, it still increases your overall available credit. So this is kind of cool because a, a higher credit limit helps you in a lot of ways. It helps you lower your credit utilization ratio. Okay, it helps you also uh, be more financially or uh, financially. Um, like I would just say you have more options. Okay, so this is a big decision time. Big decision time. Let me ask you a question. What is your plan B? 
If you're asking for, you want to, you want to have a, a higher credit limit increase, what is your plan B? Do you have a plan B? Have you thought about it? So you need to think carefully before requesting a higher limit, okay? And so the question is, should you even increase your credit limits? Okay, so, or do you even know when you are eligible for an increased credit line? Because um, as I said before, sometimes you have to be patient. It might take six months, nine months, depending on your credit history, depending on how how early or how quickly your credit card institution will actually grant you the limit that you need. So those are important things, okay? And what do you need to do before requesting a line of uh, credit line increase? Again, you want to check your credit your credit score, okay? It's important. You also want to check your credit utilization ratio, your uh, your DTI also, it's important. And uh, what do you need to do if your request is denied? Because as I said before, things happen, okay? If your request is denied, the credit card issuer basically has to tell you why they denied you, okay? And they need to see, a, those issuers need to see a history of on-time payments and responsible credit usage to actually divide, to, um, to evaluate whether you qualify for more credit access. It's all about covering their ass, okay? They are basically mitigating risks here. So if you get denied, don't panic. Everything is fine. You will be okay. Start paying your credit card and other bills on time every month. Make more than the minimum monthly payment and pay down existing balances whatever possible. Try to lower your credit utilization ratio. And you want to settle any existing collections account that you have. So this will really help you. All right, folks. This is it for today's conversation. I was talking to you about um, how to get a huge, huge credit limit increase, no matter the credit card or your credit score. First, think about proportion. Number two, timing. Number three, patience. Number four, branch. Number five, utilization. Number six, debt to income ratio. Number seven, having a plan B. I'll talk to you later. Thank you so much for being around and uh, God bless.